what does the end game look like and how necessary is that end game to you? Assess that. Then you got to make the commitment to step back and prioritize that end game or prioritize that victory for you or for the team if it's a marriage. Now that thing that you did in the assessment becomes your priority and everything that you do aligns with you getting to that victory because now it's top priority. Empower You podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners, fans, subscribers, and friends. We talk about a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, societal, and cultural perspective. We believe that in tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. So subscribe to our channel, rate, review, and let us empower you. What's up, friends? If you're anything like me, you realize that eating healthy meals supercharges your productivity and gives you a clear mind so that you can solve more problems at work or in your business. Smile More Meal Prep Service lets you choose from a variety of healthy food options that will fit your dietary needs while putting a smile on your face so you can stop stressing about eating healthy throughout the week and buying lunches because Smile More Meal Prep has got your back. And if you use the promo code EMPOWER, you'll receive 15% off your order so click the link in the show notes order your healthy delicious meals relax and smile more welcome to empower you podcast my name is kid boy cooper i am so glad that you are here um so in today's episode uh we're going to be continuing with our men's series so for those of you all who love men who identify as men who um have men in your family that you care about husband uh brother nephew son cousin whoever it is um that you care about a lot and that you uh, want to know more about um, this conversation, this series of conversations is about men and helping us understand and have a safe space to just be men. However, um, you know, uh, uh, politically incorrect that may be, this is the space where we can sit and learn and, and discover some things about ourselves, which you can only figure out when you start to share with other people and get their perspective and their wisdom about it. And today we're talking about the marriage choice. Now I said the marriage choice because um, this conversation is not meant to uh, tell you to go out and get married, tell you to do any of those things. We're just opening a dialogue around what it means to be in long-term commitments, what it means to be married. Um, because we often will romanticize this idea of love. And, you know, if you look on the internet, there's all these, these, you know, couples doing this or that. Um, but the reality is most lasting bonds um, in terms of marriage and commitment come from one primary function, and that is choice. You have to choose again and again and again. And so I have an incredible uh, guest here who's going to talk to us about the marriage choice. Now, um, my guest is a speaker and author of the book called The Man Laws, uh, a marriage coach, a father, husband, grandpa. He's an incredible human being. Um, he, we, and he actually was on uh, the podcast once before. And so uh, this is his second time on Empower You podcast. Uh, I'm super excited to have you with us, Mr. Oliver Marcel. How you doing, man? I am well, man. Listen, thank you for that great introduction. Thank you for having me back, man. It's my pleasure to come back, man. I, the first time was incredible. And uh, so I, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Absolutely, man. You are a beast, bro. I love speaking to you, <laughs> the knowledge that you have. Um, the first time we interviewed Man, you just blew my mind, and I just have never really—I um, just wasn't ready for it. I don't. 
it was just incredible. So, um, so wow. thank you so much for being here, man. Before we get started, um, I'd love for you to talk to us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you're doing, um, and, and, and how um, your coaching business and all of that started, um, as well as what you think about our topic. Absolutely, man. Just in a nutshell, man, I'm passionate about all things marriage enrichment and men's empowerment. So everything that I do, whether it be, you know, coaching along with my wife, we do some co-coaching as well. And anything that you may see on social media, it's all in an effort to enrich lives, enrich relationships, to share our journey and be a little bit transparent about not even a little. It's, it's gotten to be a lot transparent about <laughs> our lives <laughs> in, in hopes that it will inspire and encourage others on their journey as they go through this journey, uh, whether it be relationships, whether it be uh, empowering themselves through self-discovery, whatever it is, that's all we're about, man. And so that is, in a nutshell, who we are. It started uh, back in, I'd say, 2013 or so. And it started with just a blog and, and God has mushroomed that into uh, some other facets, uh, coaching and YouTube and speaking and wrote a book in 2020. So there's there's been some things, some blessings that have come as a result of that, man. And, and as it relates to the topic, I love the fact that you use the word choice. <laughs> I love that. And I think that's going to that's going to that word alone is really going to be the catalyst for some great dialogue today because it is indeed a choice and not just a choice as in who do I choose to marry or when do I choose to marry or that kind of thing but there there are some significant choices that happen that that have to continue to take place after you walk down the aisle mm. so I think this will be a great conversation mm. That's really awesome. That's really great. Oh, you already, man. Well, um, you know, I won't I won't hold you too long or any of you all who are listening. I'm really excited about this um, because when I, I had a mentor who said, um, you know, ultimately, when it comes to marriage or business, you know, there's no perfect fit. It's, it's about mm-hmm. making a choice and committing to it long enough for it to work. And that really right. just set off. Uh, a long stream of of thoughts, memories, um, ideas um, that really helped me or that really caused me to reflect on some of my own decisions, dating and 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 uh, my own relationships. And I just I needed to know more about it, and that is why um, I, I came up with the marriage choice because I was like, okay, so. We can't talk about marriage if we don't talk about choice. Indeed. You know, and so um, I feel like I just woke up to that. And so uh, I'm ecstatic that you're here to talk to us, man. Um, So my first question to you, man, is is what was your experience with marriage? Um, Did you grow up in a household with with people who were married? Did you what what was your experience with marriage as well as just like long commitments yeah i i did i did grow up in a household uh with two parents um my parents are still together now um at uh 86 and 80 years old been married for uh married for coming up on 53 years so uh, i i did see that in terms of the longevity now we're going to get into some other nuances that I wasn't sure about, which led me to not be sure about marriage, but it wasn't because it wasn't because of the longevity of it. It was because of some other things and we'll get into that. But I did grow in. I did grow up with that. And and my experience growing up was uh, was interesting because I, I grew up in a faith based home. So, you know, we were we were church folks and you know, the faith-based community is a proponent of marriage and is a proponent of longevity. And so it, it, it was always interesting to me when we would see individuals whose marriages were ending in mm. divorce in that space because it, it, it felt a little 
disjointed and, and the way that they would be treated versus the way that somebody in a long-term commitment would be treated kind of colored your perspective in a way that was like, okay, well, you gotta, you know, you gotta, when you do this, you gotta stay in this thing, which for me in my mind was like, okay, man, do I, but what if I don't want to, but you never got to really explore the, what if I don't want to Yeah. side of it? It was always like you you stick and stay. And so that, that's a very different perspective because everybody doesn't grow up with that perspective. Some grow up with the very opposite. Yeah. That they grow up with, hey, listen, you make sure you have a back door. Yeah. For this thing in case it doesn't work out. That wasn't my experience. Wow. Okay. Okay. I I, I kind of I can see what you mean as far as, you know, um f- growing up in a religious household, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and it, as church going folk, as you say, you know, and the, yeah. the different treatment of people who, you know, were maybe having trouble with their relationship like there was all this like under right. under the table you know mm, everybody like exactly. looking down their noses at people did you ever see yeah, that, and there wasn't a lot there wasn't a lot of support for that yeah yeah it, it's almost like and it was almost shocking because it was almost like one day you see these folk in church they look like everything's good and then the next week you hear they're not together anymore and you're scratching your head and as a kid, I'm not realizing that there's a there's a process that gets yeah. you to that to that point. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And then there's all this nuance in between there that you would think the church would be there to help you get through. Right. Rather you than just think. like dejecting you. Um, right. Which is. Yeah. That's a oof. That's which is a whole nother topic. <laughs> yes. Yes. So did you see yourself as a husband, a father? Is that what you wanted to be uh, growing up? I did love the idea of it. Okay. I did. I love the idea of it. I wasn't sure whether I would be that or not, but from the outside looking in, it looked like it was a great place to be. So you have these, this ideology, this dream of being, you know, being married and, you know, having two kids and living in a, in a nice home. It was right. part of the package deal right. that that was listed um, under the umbrella of success right. in America. Right. 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 Graduate from high school, go to college, pick a career that's, that's, you know, that's going to give you some type of longevity in the corporate space, get married, have, you know, two kids. So from that perspective, I was like, yeah, I could see myself doing it. Yeah. But that was pretty much all I had to go on right. as it relates to what that experience might even be like yeah 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 so it's not like you know so so you're if i'm hearing you right you didn't see marriage as a as a as an event you saw it as part of just a package deal that you were just subscribing Mm -hmm. to not like something you got to choose in that way it's just like well this is just kind of the natural progression then you do this then you do that then you do this it's not like exactly i want to grow a relationship with someone who does x y or z like that's a totally different framework on how you're looking at your life. I feel like, yep. you know, um, yep. totally different. Did you have any, uh, any male role models growing up? Or what, who were they if you did have them and what was their, um, what was their persona? How did they influence you? I, ironically, some of the individuals that, that I looked up to, a couple of them actually had failed marriages. Now that I'm mm. thinking about it, as I'm saying it out loud, mm. there's a couple people that I point to in the book, in, in, in the chapter about respect, people that I looked up to, but I had um, I had a, a pastor in particular that I thought was like the coolest guy in the world because his approach to young people at the time when I was a teenager was so vastly different than anybody that I had experienced up until that time. He was actually listening to us. Yeah. And he could actually, he, you know, sometimes you go through this experience where you, you look at the younger generation and you're like, man, these guys are just, you know, they're just clowning. Mm. And he didn't look at us like that. He was like, I get where you're coming from and let me give you some perspective and we could right. dialogue. And so that was one of the guys, uh, uh, Pastor uh, William Talaferro, Nick Talaferro, who was uh, one of those guys that was influential in growing up. Now, once I got to college, Fast forward, um, the person who now I try to emulate 
to be quite honest, is the late Dr. Anthony Kelly. Okay. And and so going back to your first question, yes, I grew up in a in a home where where marriage was constant, but there was always something that I wasn't sure about because I'm look I'm talk I'm all I see is that package that I just described. Yeah. But I'm like, man, there's got to be something more than that. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure what that is. And so I wasn't even really thinking about the whole marriage thing. I was like, because I can't really, yeah. now that I'm in college, fast forward, can't really see myself going down that road. I'm going to have to just try to pull from the other pieces of the package and hope that I'm successful. It wasn't until I met him and spent some time with him and watched how he operated with his wife that I was like, ding, 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 ding. That's it. Yeah. That's what I was look. That's what I think I want. Yeah. And so he he was very influential in, in in my approach to to what marriage is. You know that's really beautiful, man. Um, because one of the unspoken things that uh, that I experienced, you know, when um, when I was growing up, was just that you never really got any real practical. Um, advice or wisdom on on getting married it was pick a good woman that's one um Mm -hmm. and then love god i'm like and pick a woman that Mm -hmm. loves god i'm like that's great there is a lot of great women who love god (laughs) that does it you know there has to be more to this this great picture you know um Mm -hmm. because i can't just try to be you know you at least that's how i how i viewed my dad my dad and my mom had a really great marriage and everything before she passed away um but i was like i don't want to i mean i love you but i don't want to be you i can't be you because i'm me right so i don't know how to get what you have yet you know love god okay but that doesn't necessarily there's a lot of great ladies who love god and i don't mean i love them so what what is the you know what i mean like what is the 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 tangible piece in there so when you say you observed how um he Mm -hmm. interacted with his wife what was it about that that really stood out to you man there there were a couple things that stood out because i like you was i was the very same way i was like yeah i see it in my dad but I don't want to be him either. Mm. I had the very same thought process yeah. that you had. And I, it's funny, I was just having a conversation not too long ago about the whole love God piece as well. Yeah. You know, t- talking to, uh, to, to a lady who had been married more than once and realized in that process that, man, that I was hanging my hat on, uh, we both love God, so it's going to work. Right. And then realizing that there's way more to that. And so what I what I observed with Dr. Anthony Kelly and his wife, Marva, was I observed them actually being friends. Mm. And I hadn't seen that. Not to that level up until that point. Like they were really like friends, like they laughed and they joked around and they clowned each other and they made fun of each other and they were it just it just felt different it felt like me and one of my homies yeah but but that was never just like you said we didn't really get a lot of ideology from folk around around what it was like but then here's the flip side they could talk Mm. and they had discussions and they had discussions that were sometimes tense discussions but they didn't turn into arguments right And that was mind blowing for me because up until that point, every tense discussion I had was an argument. Yeah. And I was like, how, how are you doing that? (laughs) Like, how, how are you expressing how you feel? And it's contrary to how she feels and she's listening to you. And it's not a, it's not a, a, an issue, you know, it's just some mind blowing experiences that I had with him. And I just began to watch how he did it. I watched how she looked at him. I watched how he looked at her. I listened to the I, all down, even down to the names they would call each other, the pet names. I, I watched everything, and I was like, "Wow!" So this there, this is not about so much about marriage as much as it is about 
partnership and teamwork. And that opened my eyes to a whole nother perspective as it relates to marriage, because I didn't, I hadn't thought up until that point about any of those components, teamwork, uh, camaraderie, friendship, uh, unity, uh, fun. None of those words (laughs) aligned with the word marriage for me up until my experience with those two. Wow, that's huge, man. Because you don't think about that kind of stuff. At least to me, you know, mm-hmm. I my whole thing was it was it was just stressed. Don't be unequally yoked with yeah. unbelievers. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Okay. But there are other people whose faith looks like ours and they don't call it ours. There are other people who's fr- who exhibit you know and then for all of you all who are listening um the whole reference about being unequally yoked it means you know don't be with someone you shouldn't seek relationship with someone um who doesn't have your the same core values as you right right and live those core values in a in a way that um identifies with with what you're okay with or comfortable Mm -hmm. with you know it'd be like you know um somebody who is a banker right um and they are married to somebody who is kind of a scammer you know like y'all are gonna have some (laughs) ethical problems very quickly because (laughs) you know somebody gonna turn into a scammer that's all i got to say either (laughs) you know either somebody gonna get right or someone's gonna turn into a scammer so basically, mm-hmm. that's what the, the term, you know, un- being unequally yoked means. And so that was a big thing in my household. You know, it's just you just don't want to you you don't want to do that. And and a right. lot of the the conversation around faith and, and marriage has been very interesting, too, because when you say, you know, having faith and loving God doesn't make you compatible with someone. Right. It doesn't make the it, relationship it um solid you can both love god and still not at all be right for each other exactly exactly and and i said it i said it like this to someone the other day it, for me as a man of faith i sincerely believe that god should be at the center i do believe that at the foundation at the core of what i'm building god should be there mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. however i asked the person i was like i i'm willing to bet you and I don't even know you, but I'm willing to bet that right now you don't live in a foundation. Mm. If you think about your house, right? I don't know anyone who, when they were building the home, was like, the foundation is built. Okay, let's move in. Right. There's some other things that have to take place. You got to put up a frame. You got to put in windows. You got to put in doors. You got to put in cabinets and and appliances there's some there's a building process that takes place that building process requires as much if not more work than just the foundation so the foundation is important because the foundation is going to hold that structure that you're building on Mm. but you do have to build Mm. and building comes with different compromises exactly comes with a lot of choices indeed that's 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 really interesting so comes with a lot of choices tell me about um how you met your wife and and what made her stand out to you um you know as you were you know, i'm guessing you were in college or or near i was in yep i was in college okay. we, we met in college i was um the the md the music director for a choir a gospel choir on the campus of andrews university in southwest michigan and I, um, she was in the alto section. Ah, I see. So, and so how we met and what a lot of folk, well, they probably know now cause we talk about it often, but <laughs> what a lot of folk don't, didn't know is that our daughters, we have three kids, two, two girls and, and a boy, our daughters, it's, it's a blended family. So she had two girls. Oh. They were very small. The youngest of the two was about was about to turn one when I first met her. 
Okay. And I met her through the youngest daughter who was about to turn one because I worked on campus at the daycare. It was a large university. And so they had a single mother program. And so as such, they had this phenomenal daycare system for the mothers so that they could go to class. I worked in one of the classrooms where Stephanie, the youngest of our two, was a, stu- was a, a student. She was a baby. Oh, wow. And developed a relationship with her, with the baby, <laughs> through just playing and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, making the connection, her mom's in the choir, and we just started, you know, hanging out. And the thing that stood out, going back to my observation of Dr. Kelly and his wife, Marva, the thing that stood out is that she and I were, had a phenomenal friendship. One that I had not up until that point experienced with any other woman. That's the thing that stood out to me now. And we weren't even in a a quote unquote relationship at that time. There was no parameters. There was no labels on it. But that was the thing that stuck out to me. I had not experienced that level of friendship with a woman until I met her. And it just made me. And, and meeting her, I met her, um, I, yeah, I met her after meeting Dr. Anthony Kelly. So I was able to make that connection. Yeah. Like, wow, okay, this, this feels kind of like what they have at the core of their marriage, right? And so that friendship kind of kept us going. And then, you know, obviously developed a relationship with, with both the girls and, and, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> wow, man. That's really interesting. You know, one of the things that that I'm hearing, um, and again, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't sound like in the church that you came up in, they really had any mentorship, um, especially when it comes to, like, relationships and stuff. You know, I understand that most yeah. religious institutions stand for you know purity and no sex before marriage and um you know i'm I'm, you know right on um but i think as and you know obviously this goes right back to your book too man um Mm -hmm. but for men i think it takes a different type of care to to teach and to model uh whether it's abstinence or how to make meaningful connections with women how to behave appropriately uh, around women especially women you're attracted to how to really carry yourself in environments uh, in a confident but non-hostile um, manner around women mm-hmm. um, yep. and so when you talk about um, Dr. Kelly is that okay if I call him mm-hmm. Dr. Yeah. Kelly? Dr. Kelly, yeah mm-hmm. um it sounds like he mentored you in in how to behave in interpersonal relationships. Is that is that accurate? Thanks for listening to Empower You Podcast. I want to take a second and tell you about a service I've been using that has literally changed my life. Akita Ricks, the founder of SawyerScore.com, helped me erase negative items on my credit score, provided me a clear path to improving my credit, and raised my score by 100 points in the first 90 days. Like, whoa. The best part about all of this is all I had to do was follow instructions. Now, if you're like me and you need a credit bestie, you need to click the link below and schedule your absolutely free discovery call today. Tell them Kidboy sent you. That is accurate. And and here what's funny though is that it wasn't it wasn't in a formal way. It just happened that way. So I, I met Marva first before I met Dr. Kelly. And she, and we had become good friends because at the time that I met Marva, a little bit of context, I was actually dating someone else, not the person I'm married to right now. And I met Marva through that person. Oh. And just we began, we had a great relationship. I was cool with her oldest son. He and I played ball and that kind of thing. So we had that connection. But the thing with Dr. Kelly was once I started hanging out with him, it wasn't even so much that it was a formal mentorship because I started hanging out with him because he was a preacher as well. And I was a musician. Uh. And so he, he was in, he was in the South suburbs of Chicago and he had me come up. uh, I think, 
on two summers, I think I stayed with him, come up and play for for his church as they were doing some evangelistic stuff. Yeah. So I actually got to sit under him with nothing formal. Yeah. And we and just have conversations. Because wow. I was a knucklehead at that time. I'm this young kid. I'm running all <laughs> over Chicago. Every every time I wasn't playing, I'm I'm just running out. And and we'd have con- we'd be able to have conversations about some of the things I was doing and yeah. the direction that I wanted to go and what my vision was and that kind of thing. But then at the same time, I was able to observe how he was as a family man. So I kind of got. The thing that I talk about in the book is observation, training, feedback, and execution, execution and feedback, and that we should be taking men through that, and yeah. that all men should go through that. Yeah, I kind of went through that organically. It wasn't really a formal mentorship. So you think sometimes, you know, for men, and and for those of you who are just listening to uh, Oliver and Marcel and myself, this is a author, a, a marriage coach. Um, a speaker, um, a really dynamic individual. We're talking about um, the marriage choice, and so one of the things that uh, I'm 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 getting from what you're saying is is as men, you know, even if we don't have formal mentorship or or formal training or 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 access to people, um, that we should get into proximity virtually or or personally, you know, with people who exhibit the type of lifestyle and values, right, that we want to have so that we can observe how they get through life, how they do relationship, how they do conflict, how they do leadership, how they do commitment and and consistency. Um, Because that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like started off as a gig and then Mm -hmm. turns into this, you know, this life study almost. Is that right? Yep. That's exactly what it was. And I I am a huge proponent of that. Find someone that you're like, even if you're not sure what it is exactly, you can't really pinpoint what it is you think you want. Find someone who looks like they're executing mm-hmm. at the level or in the manner that you think you may want to execute. Right. And then observe them. And ask them some questions. Yeah. And and allow the 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 information that you get from them to be your catalyst for quote unquote training. Yeah. Some things that you can try out in your own experience and see how they work and see if they work and see what tweaks need to be made to be applied to your specific situation. I think it is vastly important because to go back to what you said earlier, no. There was no conversation in in my specific faith based community about what that looked like. Hence, hence the the shock and surprise when you hear somebody, you know, so and so, brother so and so, and sister so and so, not married no more. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you don't understand why because there wasn't any conversation about what marriage is. There wasn't any conversation about what are the components of a great marriage. There wasn't any conversation about what that looked like at all mm. and I think the 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 challenge that we face even up until this day is that there's so many men that go into this level of relationship and and have to uh, walk out this level of commitment that have no prior point of reference on how to do it and it's one of the only areas in life that we do that with so if you hire me Kibway right to work for you on the on day one you're not gonna be like hey welcome oliver do whatever you feel like doing figure it out <laughs> right that doesn't benefit me nor does it benefit your company yeah there's some standard operating procedures there's some things you're going to share with me there was a job description that was provided to me prior to day one so i already have a list of the expectations that you have from me yeah and then we go through this training phase, this observation phase where I'm watching what you do, or you're placing me with somebody in your company that is doing the thing that you want me to do, that allows me to train and allows me to now work out some of the things that I need to work out in order to be the best that I can be for your company. 
you're sharing with me how my level of pro how my level of productivity benefits you as a company and what I do, how what I do aligns with the mission. You get all of that. But we don't do any of that with guys when it comes to commitment and relationship. Wow. That's so true, man. And that is so it's so sad, honestly, because I've seen guys get into some relationships with some really great women. Mm-hmm. You know, and just totally and blow it. Bomb, bro. Blow just it. Bomb. You're I'm just raising, like I'm raising eesh. my hand. I'm ra- listen, I'm raising my hand. It's by the grace of God that I'm not one of those folks. Because yeah. here's the thing. Even after all of that observation with Dr. Kelly, there were still some things that I didn't talk about. Because remember, it wasn't it wasn't a formal mentorship. So there were some things that I still went into marriage not really understanding about the difference between the singular mindset and the mindset where that 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 favors duality. All of these different things that I had no clue about. Mm. So I'm winging it in my in my marriage. And in the first 18 months to two years, that was incredibly evident that wow. we, that we were winging it. Because it because it, it was rough. What were some of your your biggest challenges? Um, you know, did you have even before you got married, right? What did you What were some some red flags that you saw? And I I don't mean necessarily uh, with your wife. I mean just as far as like some areas that just frightened you a little bit. Because I think one of the things that um, you know, and and maybe this is not everybody, but I think certainly for some men that I know and myself. Um, I think one of the the, the terrifying uh, aspects of marriage is this idea that um, one, you're bound to encounter things that you don't know, mm-hmm. and then two, you have an audience of somebody who has expectations for you, even if neither of you know. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's yeah, like it does. You you feel like, well, I know I'm gonna do this, but mm-hmm. I also know there's gonna be things that I don't know. And yeah. what I really don't want to do is get completely embarrassed because there's something that neither of us know and you're just expecting me to know. So I'd rather keep mm-hmm. you at a distance so that we can all be safe and um we just kinda take it from there. Is that a bad mm-hmm. assessment, do you feel like of of the, the way that men sometimes approach long-term relationships and what were some of the, the challenges that you were seeing coming up with yourself? I, I'll, I'll say, is it a bad assessment? Yeah, maybe, but for a lot of us, that's all we know. Yeah. Like all we know is our fears mm-hmm. and all we know is our apprehensions. We don't, we, we don't have anything to counteract that with mm-hmm. because no conversations are happening. Oof. And and so for me, <laughs> and, and and that's kind of where big. I fit in, right? Yeah. All I knew was what I had done or not done up until that point. And for me, th- one of the biggest fears was I had not been committed, whatever that word meant, because I didn't even know what that word meant. Let's be clear. But committed in the sense of longevity to anyone or anything for longer than a year my entire life up until the point of me getting married. Yikes. Not a job, not even school because there were periods of time during school that I was not taking classes for whatever reason. Not because I was just being lazy. Finances came up. I couldn't register for a semester so I went and worked at a job for you know four months and then left that job and did Up until that point there is not one thing I could point to or one person that I could point to that I that I had had any level of longevity with past one year. So I'm like, OK, I'm about to walk down the aisle and commit whatever that means to something that's supposed to last the rest of my entire life. Mm. Mm. So I'm like, dude, mm. do you really want to do that? Like, yeah. <laughs> And, and not even do you really want to do that, but I have no clue what that even looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Because past a year, that's my 
cutoff point. <laughs> That's my cutoff point. That's <laughs> so, it. I don't even know what to do. Yeah. And that's Man. and and that's why it's so important that for what like what you're doing right now with this series. That's why it's so important that these kinds of conversations exist. And it's not to scare people off, but it's to prepare you. Yeah. It's just like going back to to, to the scenario of you hiring me. When you hire me and you tell me what's expected of me, you're not telling me that to scare me. You're telling me that so that I can have some level of preparedness. Yep. Yep. For what's to come. Yeah. And some assurances that you got my back as it relates to training, as it relates to me being able to come to you and ask you a question and to clarify and all, all of those kinds of things. Yeah. We can't expect guys to go into something that's supposed to last forever with absolutely no point of reference on what forever means or the components that make you successful in forever. That's huge. The components that make you successful in forever. That is, that's huge, man. Because I, you know, I'm sure, you know, some folks got it figured out, but I know for me, and I think I said this on that live um, that you did with uh, with Shannon, the marriage um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, coach on, on Instagram. You know, I said I don't I don't want to get it wrong. I feel like there mm-hmm. are promises on my life. I feel like there are things that I'm meant to do. And um, while I desire partnership, I also know mm-hmm. how fragile it is. And how quickly, for me at least, you know, I'm a giver. And so yeah. you can lose yourself in, yeah, you in in relationships. And if it's not the right one, you can really right. lose years and years of time. Um, would you, do you think, I want to say this and then I'm going to ask my question. Okay. One of the things that I think as men we have to understand is that not all of us are what you would, uh, what the world, what culture, what society tells you is an alpha male, right? The, the guy who walks in and everybody has to do what he says or something like, I have struggle sometimes with this, these archetypes that mm-hmm. people put men into, oh, well, I'm an alpha male. What does that mean? Yeah. What, what really yeah. does that mean? Well, I command presence. Okay, and then you do what with it exactly? You know, right. none of these things qualify you to lead or make you special. And any anybody can come in a room and make noise. Anybody can come in a room and you know puff their chest out. Like there's just some of us, you know, myself included, have a different type of leadership, um, have mm-hmm. a different type of approach to life. And I think because we make the box for men so rigid Mm -hmm. there are there are some of us who are givers right some of us who who don't fit the stereotypical whatever especially as black men um and it can become difficult to assess where you are on the pecking order so to speak it's just like Mm -hmm. well i'm not about to walk around and do all of that I'm not, I'm just not that dude. I don't care that right. much. I got other things that are super important to me. Impressing you is not one of them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I think that sometimes that's what we can attribute to this idea of alpha male. It's like, well, you know, you're, you're, you're impressive to everybody. I'm like, I'm impressive because I'm impressive. I don't right. really necessarily need your validation for that. And so I don't mm. seek it, you know? Um, So to those of you who, you know, who have husbands or who are listening to this men, you know, and you don't feel like you fit into that, whatever bravado, Instagram, Facebook idea, like you'll see all these groups about alpha, whatever's listen, Mm -hmm. you know, confidence is ultimately very important. Confidence and skill set. Like you can, they can keep all the rest of that. None of the rest of that really I don't know. I don't feel like it translates to much except arrogance and ego, but that's that's just yeah, my personal yeah. opinion. I, 
I agree with that. I agree with that. I would dare say, man, that some of these titles and some of these things that we're seeing floating around now in the way of ideologies is actually a setup for failure. Whew. Say that. Because if I box you into something that you feel like you have to be, but it doesn't align with who you are character wise, and it doesn't it doesn't speak to the things that you grapple with personally. Now I make you ineffective in every, every other scenario that you touch. Mm. Mm. Big facts, big facts. Which is a detriment to you, which then essentially is a detriment to everything you touch. Because yeah. the things that you grapple with, you're unable to address in the box that you're in. There's so much right there, man. So much right there. Do you feel like, do you feel like this idea of, of love for men? Okay. Do you feel like I, mm-hmm. women got their own stuff, right? But do you feel like that's real for men? Do you feel like love is the ultimate factor in commitment? Or do you feel like choice is the ultimate factor in commitment? It's just choosing. This is the woman I want to act out these, this set of values with and build this with. You know, um, do you think that there those are those are two separate entities? Um, because I think love is great, you know. But I, I just I want to know from your from your opinion, you know, whether you think we've kind of lost track of what love actually is, and if choice is tr- truly the deciding factor. Yeah, I I think it's interesting because when we think about the word love, right, many of us don't think past the 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 emotion, the the endorphins, the that thing that comes up, that fuzzy, warm feeling, right, which which I read a while back is is uh, almost identical to the feeling you get when you snort cocaine. (laughs) sometimes we don't ever get past that definition and so many of us and i listen i put myself in that category as well because i did as i did this as well so many of us make very significant decisions based on that feeling because we feel like that's the overarching thing to the success of our relationship but it's not to answer your question it's choice because i could have that feeling for someone and never really get past that because here's the thing with with love after that feeling or in addition to that feeling i should say are some some very cognitive physical cognitive and physical things that need to take place to sustain that feeling. And that's where we mess up. So when when the feeling begins to fade, it's like a car running out of gas. If you if you're driving the car runs out of gas and you don't have any gas to put in it, now you're stuck and you have a decision to make. Am I going to walk all these miles to this gas station? Is it worth it? Am I just going to get the car towed? Am I going to leave it? You got all these things, right? And it's the same thing with that emotion. Once that starts to kind of fade a little bit and you don't have the cognitive things in place, you haven't made the choice to commit and you haven't made the choice to do these other things that sustain that feeling. That's when a lot of people are like, oh, well, this ain't for me. (laughs) Uh, It's a wrap. I'm out. But you got to choose to do some other things, man. You got to choose. I tell people all the time, commitment requires consistent effort. That has nothing to do with that lovey dovey, whatever it is you want to call feeling. That has everything to do with committing to learn the person you're with, committing to learn yourself, committing to make whatever adjustments are necessary so that you are able to establish and realize your ideal relationship and that's an ongoing process that's a choice you make consistently over time 
I've been married 21 years and I've had to make that choice consistently over time because in that 21 years, we've gone through so many stages of life. We've gone through so many hardships. We've gone through so many great times. We've changed as individuals. So there's a learning process. There's a learning, a relearning. There's a, a continuing education, if you will, of myself of her and then committing to take that new knowledge and figure out how the team uses that new knowledge to its advantage. And you got to do that throughout the course of your relationship in order for it to be, in order for you to see some level of longevity. Wow, man. That is, that's a lot, man. I feel like, you know, I just feel like it's a it's a big undertaking to try to do all by yourself without vulnerability and, and some level of coaching and um, yeah. accountability, because there's so many points in there where, you know, your ego could very easily disrupt this pattern of logical or emotionally intelligent thinking of consciousness, um, because yeah. we all have egos Um ego that has been damaged and um and you know emboldened by different things that have happened in our lives and so navigating that really aware and vulnerable space without having done some significant ego um you know awareness or repair I feel like it's really hard because I think it is as men we hide our trauma in our ego mm -hmm. we hide our trauma in our rage and in our in our, our, in, our in our anger and in our strong emotions and so you in order to make those kind of decisions and keep accepting that other people are changing and growing and developing it means I feel like, and I could be wrong, but I feel like for me, it means I have to accept. I have to accept myself with that same level of grace um, in order for me to show that to other people. Because if I expect myself to be this, you know, constantly hard, rigid, you know, alpha, whatever, in control, blah, 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 blah it's going to be difficult for me to give other people the space to be themselves. However, that looks at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, That's very true. That's very true. And I'm, I'm glad you said that because here, here's the mistake that many people make, including myself, is that we, we attack the issue, whatever it is with behavioral change. Explain which is that. not sustainable without mindset change. Mm. So you talked about letting go of ego, right? Got it. That's a mindset shift to begin to allow you, you to give yourself the room and space and grace that you need to be accepting of what you're dealing with at the moment, but know that there's evolution on the other side of the process. Yeah. That's a mindset shift. And I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't make that mindset shift early in my marriage. I saw some things are going wrong. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just try to do this. I'm not going to do this no more. I'm not going to say this no more. I'm doing all of these behavioral changes, but my mindset is still the same. Mm -hmm. So at some point that becomes a chore and that becomes too tedious for me because there's no mindset that is the foundation of those changes that those adjustments that I'm trying to make. Yeah. And often we do that. And then the second thing that we do is to, to speak to what you mentioned is that we don't give that level of grace. We're so boxed into who we feel like we should be. That one, we don't give the other person any room or any grace, and then we don't give ourselves any room. So we end up stifling who we are. And that feeling of being stifled causes us to run away. Yeah. So if you think about a plant, right? they tell you, you, you have to transplant into a bigger pot so that it has room to grow. So if you have it in this small pot, either you're only going to get what you got, or you're going to kill the plant because it needs the space to grow. Yeah. 
And we got to give that room to be who we are at in the moment, but understand that there's a process that leads to some level of growth and evolution if the space has been provided for that. Mm. So I love what you said, where you're talking about letting go of ego. And that's a mindset shift. And for a lot of men, that's not an easy shift to make because we've never seen it played out. Right. Right. I see a Which lot goes of back to the mentorship thing. Yeah, I see a lot of, you know, at least in my life, I feel like I've seen, you know, um, women change mm -hmm. because they're trying to draw something out of you that you haven't chosen to give. And so, you know, you, you, you become stuck in one, not accepting yourself and then also not accepting what this other person wants you to be. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you end up being frustrated with them because you feel like you're trying to make me something I don't want to be, but then you're frustrated with yourself because you feel like I'm frustrated with who I am. Does that make sense? It makes sense. And you're accurate, 100%. Yeah. The question is, right, here's the question. And, I, and I, I know this may throw us off track for a second, but this is rhetorical for whoever's listening, right? The question is, how do you navigate that? Man, uh, for Kibway, I think yeah. you have to have a strong self-identity and know I, I, I make decisions based off of what keeps my fire alive. And I don't mean like physically, gotcha. right? Like you know, what just makes me patented. And I'm just being like, based off of what I believe God put me on here, the earth to do, what I feel like I'm best at doing, I just try to build my life around that. I feel like I'm good at, at creating spaces for people to be open and to share uh, and, 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 to, and to reveal things about themselves that helps other people. And so I'm building my parts of my life around this podcast. I think I'm really helpful at helping people diagnose problems and systematize solutions um, in order to help them get to a desired result. That's why mm -hmm. I coach. You know, I just want to build my life around doing the things that I feel like I'm innately passionate and gifted at doing. I don't build my life based off of, um, you know, my ego necessarily. At least I don't think, you know, I don't build my life off. I don't. That's just not. That's how I figure me out right i'm like well mm -hmm. does this handle my chief responsibility which is to use the gifts that god gave me if you're not going to mm -hmm. enable me to do those or i feel like you are trying to control or or, or squeeze me in that way sh uh, i don't i don't want to do it I don't, I don't really like super attachment anyway like yeah someone who's truly passionate about what they need to do and they're not waiting on me to be they're whatever I'm more drawn to that person because I think mm, okay. my core desires my flame is safer around someone who is taking care of their own flame mm. if you're expecting to draw off of my like it just gets really weird for me you know and I feel like sometimes as men you know we we don't want to share everything and again we get we get siloed into these specific actions which you know i get it you know especially as a young person or whatever things can get hairy and confusing when it comes to interpersonal relationships but i think ultimately for myself i think knowing who you are and giving yourself the freedom to be that regardless mm -hmm. of how everybody else views it regardless right. of how it works or doesn't work for somebody else i think knowing and, and leaning into who you are as a man as you know uh, uh somebody who has a belief system if you believe in god i believe in god um or what i interpret as god um mm -hmm. i think i just build around that i don't know what i'm doing either <laughs> But, but you know what's funny? Here's the thing. That's a choice. Yeah. Everything you just described, right? You have to choose to do that. Yeah. Going back to what you were talking about, right? With marriage being a choice, you got to choose to do that. You got to choose to have that outlook. 
Yeah. And there's some, maybe there's some growth, maybe there's some experiences, maybe there are some people that you've met, some insights that you've gained along the way that help you make that choice. But essentially, with everything that you may have gone through or learned or been exposed to, at the end of the day, you still have to decide, okay, yeah, that's who I'm going to be. Yeah. And and that's what I want in return. Yeah. And it's the same, it's the same way, right? With, with marriage. I tell guys all the time, and you know, guys will ask me sometimes, man, how did you do such and such? And you know, how, how did you deal with such and such? And how did you deal with that? And how'd you cope with that? And I, and, and I'm on, you know, I'm an honest guy, man. Yeah, you, you've seen the stuff I post, right? Yes, I, sir. I, sometimes I tell the guys, listen, man, I can give you, you know, some practical stuff that I did and some, you know, some conceptual things that I think may work for you. But let me just, can I be honest with you for a second? They're like, yeah. It's like, bro, you just got to decide you're going to do it. At the end of the day, that's really what it boils down to. How, how, man, I'm going to deal with this woman. How I'm going to deal with this. You know, you just, at, at some point, you just got to be like, all right, man, I'm just going to do it. Now, is there, it, are there some things that you may have to put in place after you make that decision? Absolutely. But that's where it starts, right? Yeah. Because if not, all you're doing is trying to put band-aids on things and, and you know, do some quick behavioral changes just to, you know, appease somebody. And you get tired of doing that over time. Yeah. Oof. So, you know, I know it's getting late, bro. Um, is it okay if I ask you two more questions? Absolutely. Okay. Um, Absolutely. So what, really quick, uh, the, the two questions are, what do you feel like is a solid framework for um, for men making the marriage choice? How should they uh, qualify that? And then my second question is, what do you wish you knew about yourself before you had gotten married? Okay, man, those are great questions. So, so for the first one, right? I'll 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 sum up everything in two questions that I ask all of the couples that we that we coach every couple that we coach they're going to get asked these two questions coming down to the end of the first session the first question is what is your ideal relationship look like that's going to take some time for you to really kind of dig in and be like man what is it that i really want because some of us we don't even know what we want Right. Outside of, you know, what I'm saying great body and, you know, all of that, you know, we don't really know what we want as it as it relates to relationship. And I always have to push couples. Listen, dig deeper. I'm not talking about, hey, I want somebody who, you know, is affectionate and I want somebody who is I'm not talking about that surface stuff. I'm talking about at the core of the relationship. What are you looking for? What makes the relationship ideal? Then the second question is, are you willing to make whatever adjustment is necessary in order to achieve whatever it is you come up with in number one? And then when I say whatever, I'm talking about whatever. So even if you don't know how to do it, even if you've never done it before, even if you don't know what it looks like, even if you have to be coached on it, even if it is outside of your comfort zone, are you willing to make whatever adjustments are necessary? Because now that does two things. That causes you to look inward and do some real inventory on who you are, what your value system is, and how you see yourself being beneficial to this team of a relationship. And then two, it causes you now to be a little bit more cognizant of what you see in the other person because you need to be able to evaluate whether that teammate is going to be willing to make the choice to commit to helping you reach the ideal that you outlined in number one. Mm. That's heavy. I wrote those down. And for you guys who are listening, the two questions where you need to ask yourself are what does your ideal relationship look like? And question number two is, are you willing to do whatever and make whatever adjustments it's going to take to make that happen? 
those are yeah. huge questions, man. I'm definitely yeah. going to do some thinking on those. Um, my last question, what's the one thing you wish you knew about yourself before you got married? The one thing I wish I knew about myself was that I would have to change. That's that's it. Well, there, there are many things I wish I knew, but that that's the first thing that came to mind. I I got in. It's funny. I, I'll tell you a story. About a month or so. No, I was probably more than that. Maybe about two or three months before I got married. I told my wife, I was like, listen, I'm never going to change. Mm. And and I don't want you to change either. And I said that based on what I was experiencing at that time and who I, I, I thought I was who I was supposed to be at that time. Now, had that been the case, we wouldn't be married right now. So the one thing I, I wish I knew going in is that you're going to have to make some adjustments. I told a guy this not too long ago. I was like, listen, if you and I are on a basketball team and you're the point guard and the coach comes to you and he's like, listen, man, I'm going to need you to start going left on opponents that are right handed. Did he just tell you that you're no longer a point guard? <laughs> no. No, he just asked you to make a minor adjustment that's going to actually benefit you and the team. I didn't know that going in, uh. that you would have to do that and that those adjustments are not a threat to your authenticity. To your ego. Right, because that's the next fear is that, oh, I'm going to make all these changes, man. I ain't going to be me no more. Yes, yes. Nah, that's, not, that's not the case. The, the, the coach asked him to make an adjustment. He's still a point guard. At the end of the day, he's going to always be a point guard. Yeah. No matter what adjustments he makes, what we're hoping is that the adjustments you make are beneficial to your success on the stat sheet and yeah. to the success of the team. Yeah. Hmm. And I wish I knew that going in. Wow. Because I'd have been, I would have been a lot quicker. I would have done some things and made some choices to go back to your key word. I would have made some choices sooner, some different choices. Wow, man. Oof. Choices, man. This is incredible. For all of you all who are listening right now, um, go ahead and, and leave a five-star review, uh, five-star rating. Put a review in the chat. So that you say, thank you, Oliver Marcel. Uh, we appreciate you, man. You are dropping bombs right now. I've been taking notes and really doing some deep thinking over here because this is, uh, this is all really important to me. Um, especially as I get older and, and figure out what it is I really want to do and how I want to move. You know, I don't have the same amount of time or attention that I used to have. Like, I got to make sure every move makes sense. And then yeah. I got to, you know, stick to it. You know, I'm thinking long game for everything. And so this I, is very yeah, helpful, I get it. man. And you have to. Yeah, <laughs> you have to at this point, man. Yeah, bro. You have to at this point. So, um real quick before mm -hmm. um we let you go uh, i want to know for the audience how can they get a hold of you how can they engage with what you and your wife are doing um mm -hmm. and after that you know would love to hear a thought exercise from you man sure. something that okay. really helps you um make better choices really helps you when you feel like your ego is impacting your choices when you feel like you know you're getting stuck uh when you're encountering new things uh, would love to hear that from you uh but first sure. we gotta know more and, and be able to tap in with you man <laughs> after this episode like this is incredible bro man I, I appreciate it man i thank you first of all for for the opportunity man to chop it up with you man it's always a pleasure absolutely uh, the easiest way to get a hold of me man is to go to the website which is denali d-e-n as a nancy o-l-i it's merely my the first three letters of my wife's name denise the first three letters of my name oliver d-e-n-o-l-i nice dot org okay that's the best way so from there you can get podcasts youtube uh everything else is there you know merch all of those things are there the book that's the that's the central hub 
and it will, depending on when you listen to this, it may look a little different than it does at the time of this recording. Okay. Because it's uh, it's being redone right now, but it's it it's being done in the background. So if you go there right this moment, you're going to still get all of those things. Nice. Nice. So for anyone who is interested, all of these links will be in the show notes. Um, so you can go mm-hmm. ahead and click and follow and make sure you tap in with Oliver Marcel and what he is doing. He's amazing. Um, and it's definitely worth some of your time, especially for those who are in relationships, thinking about getting into relationships um, and who are, uh, you know, maybe experiencing some challenges uh, in your marriage choice. This would be a really, really good stop for you. So um, those those links will be in the show notes. So go ahead and, and, and hit him up. So um, for our thought exercise, brother, the, the floor is yours, man. Hey, I appreciate it. Listen, I'm going to take something straight out of the book, man. And um, just for, for, for men, something that I have to do as I am working through different things is uh, I take a, a three-step approach. And it is assessment, commitment, and consistent effort. So assessing a scenario, taking some time to kind of dig in, understanding what the nuances are, committing to whatever it is I'm going to do as a result of that information, and then putting in the consistent effort to back up the commitment that I made, right? And so I I want those of you who are listening to just take a second to ask yourself how necessary is victory? What does the end game look like? And how necessary is that end game to you? Assess that. So it kind of aligns with what we talked about. What is your ideal relationship? But now this is speaks to everything in your life. Assess that. How necessary is the benefit? What is the scenario? And what's the benefit to accomplishing that scenario in the way that you feel like is best for you? Right. Because you want the outcome to benefit the scenario. You want the outcome to benefit the team if we're talking about relationships and marriage, right? Not just you. So now you got to think outside of yourself. So take some time to do that assessment. And then once you come up with the answers to that and you come up with the resolve to that, then you got to make the commitment to step back and prioritize that end game or prioritize that victory for you or for the team if it's a marriage. Now that thing that you did in the assessment becomes your priority and everything that you do aligns with you getting to that victory because now it's top priority. That's the commitment that you're making, right? You got to commit to taking a moment to evaluate and choosing the option that aligns with you getting to that victory or the team getting that win. And then, of course, like I said, with all commitment comes consistent effort. It requires that. So the consistent effort is to follow through with all of the things that you came up with in your assessment. It's one thing to talk about it and say, hey, okay, I got it. This is what we're going to do. It's another thing to actually do it. So follow through with your assessment. Allow yourself the grace, the room to continue to learn, to continue to grow, to be able to observe, to train, to execute, be open to the feedback and allow that to take you down the journey that leads you from idea to choice. Because on the back of that choice is your victory. Sheesh. That's great. That's great, man. Oh my God. Did y'all get all of that? Assessment, commitment, and consistency. All are super so so assessment is looking at the overall picture and and what you're actually trying to attain yep and then you commit to the actions that are going to help you do that and you make consistent choices until you are able to reach that victory that's it that is incredible man that's incredible this is why this men's series is so important because we got to be able to have these conversations, man. It's, man, it's it's vital. We got to be able to have these vital. conversations. I feel like, you know, 
we cause ourselves and others a lot of unnecessary pain because we just try to figure all this out on the fly. And you would think yeah. that, you know, for people who grew up with in a, in a, in a two parent household and all this, um, that you'd have a better handle on it. But it's it's not that's just not the case. You still yeah, got to. That's not always the case. Yeah, yeah. Work through it. So this is amazing, man. Thank you so much for being here. You all make sure you go follow Oliver Marcel, Denali.org. Man, again, click the show notes, leave a review, say thank you. If this really moved you, share this with somebody who um, who you feel like really needs to hear this, because you may have someone on your mind right now while you're listening to this podcast. Go ahead and share it to them. Costs you nothing, costs them nothing. And it goes towards to show how much you think of them, um, because this is we're building something here. And so there will be more. Uh, topics around you know men and, and and the challenges we we're facing as well as the way we can overcome them with the least amount of damage um and so uh that's that's what we're doing here on empower you podcast um oliver any last words before we wrap it up man i would say if i had to give some last words it's just listen you have a purpose you have a passion and you have a path. All of those things are very much discoverable with a little persistence. Mm. Mm. Whew. It doesn't close out much stronger than that. <laughs> you all, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so, 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 so much. Um, we will be back with more episodes of Empower You podcast in our men's series next week but until then thank you so much we will talk to you super soon peace thanks for listening to empower you podcast don't forget to rate and review this episode because we would love to hear your takeaways from this discussion and it helps us reach more listeners just like you if you'd like daily audio video clips from the podcast you can find empower you podcast on facebook instagram and YouTube. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon.